Hey guys, we continue with the novelist. I, um, I haven't slept in like 30 hours, so if I'm really hyper or a little quiet at times, it's because I'm running on lack of sleep, so don't mind me. I might be a little weird. The road ahead, the summer came to an end, and Dan faced a di didgeridoo. All right, um... I love when it, like, okay, so there's the part where, you know, you see the chapter title coming up, and then there's the moment where all the color comes into the game. I really like when that happens. It's like the Wizard of Oz, where all the color comes in. It's not black and white anymore. It's just like, bam! I like that. They walk so loud, but anyways, let's just read. Wait. Wait. Oh, I thought she was reading it, and I was like, why did she just mumble and not read it? If she was mumbling upstairs. Okay, <laughs> I need to lower my headphones. Maybe I hear them too well. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, after additional consideration, I'd like to augment my recommendation. I believe that the best course of action for Tommy's development will be continued tutoring throughout the school year. It will be important to coordinate with his teachers and make sure that lessons are aligned. As before, encouragement from both of you is a critical component. Mr. Kaplan, I have observed that Tommy looks to you in particular for validation, which I believe comes from a connection he made, he's made with your profession. If at all possible, you should be a part of his tutoring, although Mrs. Kaplan is more than capable of aiding him as well. I hope I haven't overstepped my bounds by contacting you, but Tommy is a bright boy, and I think with the proper support, he can not only catch up, but excel. I understand you'll be leaving town shortly, but please don't hesitate to contact me by phone during the school year if I can be of any help. All right. <gasps> There's the little bitch now. Not joking. I'm joking, Tommy. Relax. Don't freaking like... draw me as a monster or anything. Lonnie learns letters. If Daddy helps me, I can do it. All right. Let's do. Oh, perfect. The memory's right here. It's just the drawing one. But he's happy because we chose him last time. That's always what it is. He's happy. Oh, look at the fort. That's odd. I want one of those. Ever ever since I played this last week, I've been really wanting to build, like, a, a fort. With, like, chairs and sheets and couch cushions. Something really elaborate. Where is this? Oh, there we go. There we go. What about my friends? You don't have friends, son. I'm joking. You'd make new ones, buddy. New ones, okay. I'd drop it. I wouldn't even care. I'd be like, boop. Sorry, Dad. And then it would shatter to pieces. Yo, Linda, what up? Look at how you walk down the stairs, all tippy-toed and weird. Really grow. All right, let's see her. Memories. Well, I guess family time every night was too much to ask for. That worries me, though Dan did agree to be at dinner every night, so he's at least trying. It's just, we came here to start fresh and set things right. We were on such a bad course before. And if we can't make time to do it right while we're here, how will we be able to do it when we get back home? There'll be so much going on when we get back. Are we doing enough here? Family dinner every night? Like, you need some time away from each other. Oh, look, he's boozing. I should show I she. Go full time if... You can say it. If I got a real job. Whoa! Whoa! Did she talk shit on Dan because he isn't writing well? Linda, what the hell is wrong with you? Linda, I'm pleased to meet you. Well, by letter, anyway. <laughs> Alright, you guys. I'm reading this for the second time because I read it once, and that's not in this video. But I couldn't read it because I kept laughing for an unknown reason. I was about to choke, and I was like, oh, that's going to be so horrible for the video in my head. That's what I thought. And then I, instead of choking when I went to cough, I burst out laughing, and it didn't stop as I kept trying to read. Hopefully I'll get it this time. 
I don't know. Linda, I'm pleased to meet you. Well, by letter anyway. I'm surprised we've never met considering how small the art community is, but from your letter, it sounds like you may not have been as active as you'd have liked for a few years. Regardless, I'm very excited to tell you more about our work here. At a high level, the program is simple. We're a collective of artists who use our work for the betterment of our city. We host fundraiser galleries, donate our work to charity auctions, and teach art classes. We offer both paid and unpaid courses, and all proceeds from the paid courses go to local charities, usually the food bank. What? What? Like, no, I'm not against giving to charities. Food banks are great, but like, come on, give me a little bit of that money. Like, I'm not painting for fun. I'm painting for cash money. Just, I don't paint, so that's irrelevant to me. Um, but I'm sure Linda's like, oh, I'd like a cut. You know, we gave, a, we gave them all the food they need. They are full. There's only so much people can eat. Just give me some of the money now. Our free courses are part of a pioneer program we've recently started where we provide a safe place for victims of violence, members of our local AA chapter, and even parolees trying to get back on their feet. The program is still in its early stages, but we've been very pleased with the results. It's a very exciting time. Anyway, you'll find more details in the enclosed info information packet. I'd love to talk to you about joining in person when you return to, uh, Laurenton? <laughs> Rachel Pittman, founder, Art for All. We should give all, all right, so if we get to choose what local charities, we should just choose to give all the money to the parolees and then just like be like, yo, you know, I know you're out of prison, but uh, let's start our own oh, crime Daddy. faction. Hey, bud. Don't talk to him. I need to read his thoughts. And I didn't. It's too late. Ooh, there's a thing on the thing. Dinner this week. Baked ziti and salad, meatloaf, mashed potatoes and broccoli, hamburgers, baked beans and corn on the cob and dad, grills night, hot dogs, mac and cheese, grilled steaks, potato salad, corn on cob, summer special, ants crack pot, no, I'm just kidding, ants crack, ants crock pot, Italian chicker, chicker, <laughs> chicken and peppers, lentil soup, too hot for something heavier. Um, I cannot talk today. God. I can't apparently stay in memories either. Spent three paragraphs discussing the weather? How dare you. I think someone just got shot outside. Wait, no! Oh my god. What? Why am I having issues right now? I don't even... Alright, can we... Can we, like, look at this memory? Come on. Oh my god, I don't know you guys. I don't know what's going on. Do I have to get up on that? Huh. It won't let me look. Huh. He like kind of... Wait, wait. It's impossible there we to go. get into a rhythm right now. This place was supposed to create some peace and quiet, but I almost never get two unbroken writing blocks in the same day. I know I'll never get exactly the schedule I want, that's just a fact of life. But that doesn't make it easier to get good work done with everything else going on. Just gotta figure out a way to push through. No other choice, really. This book isn't going to write itself. Alright. Memory Uno? Let's see if we can get another one. Uh, and of course it's upstairs. It's always upstairs. There he is. That's Linda, not a he. Alright. Is, where's Dan? Why is there a suitcase? Hmm. How long's the drive? Oh, he's like two hours. We'd have to move. Wait, we have to move? It. The school was like far away. Is that the problem? Okay, I got it. I mean, I was paying attention during the school letter, but I wasn't paying attention to the school letter. Yeah, it will, um, I don't, all right, I, well, okay. It didn't say where that school is located, but I'm guessing it, it's where they're from. Barb. Maybe. By the time you get this, we'll be on our way home, so don't write me back here. Oh, summer's over, it's derp. I believe the summer's almost over. So much has happened. The show, getting used to life up here, painting more than I have in years, losing Grandma Joe. Figuring out where Dan and I are. 
Part of me doesn't want to leave, but I know it's time. They say you can't go home again. I think I know what that means now. I don't have it in me to explain everything here, but things will never be the same. I don't even know what home I'm going back to. The only thing I do know is that I'm ready to start painting again. For real, like I did before Tommy. I'm scared and excited and nervous all at the same time. I just wish I knew how we were going to make it work. I hope this finds you well. Yours, Linda. My husband won't pay attention to me because he's writing a novel that's really, really important to his living. But, you know, screw him. Sometimes, like, like I felt bad for Linda with the funeral where we accidentally didn't go with her. I felt bad. But, like, sometimes she makes it really difficult for us to, like, feel bad for her. Look at all these happy things. There's the cars. Like, sometimes I feel like she's like, has to be my way or the highway. Which I guess everyone, like Tommy's like, I want it to be my thing. And Dan does too. Um, that's an address. Paul, there were days when I thought this moment would never come. When I finish writing this, I'm going to pack everything up and drop the manuscript in the mail. My palms are sweating just thinking about letting it go. I had no idea how hard it would be to finish this one. I took everything I had, and it's hard to look back over the summer without laughing. To think the plan was to get away from everything and just focus on the book. But you can't get away from yourself. Life doesn't give a damn about geography. I don't know when you'll get this or where we'll be when you do. Or what you'll think. I know what I think, but objectivity left the building months ago. Some days I think this is the one. Other days I have a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach that says my career is over. All I can do is drop this in the mail and hope. Here goes. Oh boy. So, he's, oh my god. Things are going down with the story. Let's see the journal. This could be it. An associate professorship at Hardesty? It's entry level, sure, but everyone has to start somewhere and it's the perfect situation for writing. The sabbatical program alone makes the job worth it. And the thought of actually working with Professor May? Wait, I guess I'd be calling him Philip now. That'll take some getting used to. But moving's a big step. I can't imagine a new school with new kids would be easy for Tommy. I know staying in Laurenton would be better for him and Linda, but they aren't handing out professorships on the corner. This isn't the kind of offer you pass up without a very good reason. But I might have two good reasons. Aww. I tried to sleep on it last night. What a joke. You have to be able to sleep for that to work. Alright. Hey, hon. What you doing? Blasting off. See, his was all nice, and like Linda was like, "Oh my god, I fucking hate Dan. My life's not the same. I just want to paint." Before Tommy was here, I was fine. Now he's here, I can't paint. She didn't actually say that, but we can. Whatever. I just talked things over with Dan, and we really have some serious thinking to do. The job at Hardesty sounds like a great opportunity for him, but moving would be so hard on us. I really want to join Art for All, and after everything we've been through with Tommy, it would be better for him to have some stability. I could even go full-time if Dan found a steady job, though I know he can't do that if he takes on extra tutoring with Tommy, and I'd never fault him for that. If we stay in Laurenton and Dan works with Tommy, I could still do the program part-time. Either way, it'd be better for Tommy and me than moving. Crap! That professorship would mean so much to Dan. Can't everything be simple just once? What do we do? She's not gonna be, look, she's not gonna be making any money with her art for charity stuff. Like, that's a noble cause, all right. But this is a family. You need money to run a family. Do you know how expensive children are? They're oh, expensive, all right? Thing. So, I feel like we have to go with Dan on this one. Or he gets a full- like, where's he gonna get a full-time job? Why am I looking at him? Wait, well, no. I just want to see his thought. Just drop the envelope in the mail. <gasps> That's for him to join the university. What do you want? Hey. Send my second painting for the full-time application. I don't- does she get paid? Like, from what I understood, it was just- Got it, Daddy said we can start a whole new book part tomorrow. 
Did we not find him? Um... Yes! <gasps> He's too loud! It's like it screams in your ears. Too much. Too much. Yeah, I feel like we missed... What did we miss of yours? I don't want to make new friends. You can make new friends. Remember, Davy smells bad. You don't need him. Or Davy lived around here, though. So that wouldn't be relevant. What's this here? Is this new? All right. Mr. Kaplan, we have reached a decision and are pleased to offer you the position of Assistant Professor, professor of Literature. We've had many applicants for the position, and after careful review, we felt your history with the university and your status as a published author will give you a unique connection to our students. We apologize for the lateness of the decision, but administrative adjustments delayed our annual budget review, and the position was only recently approved for hire. Professor Strode will handle your course load until September 21st, at which point you will take over classes. We will provide temporary housing for you during this speedy transition, but need your answer as soon as possible. Your offer letter is enclosed. Please sign and return it at your earliest convenience. Yeah, we're definitely going Dan because we haven't chose Dan, like, at all. Oh, look, there's a school you're not going to be going to anymore. That's what you get for making rocket noises. Now you got to make new friends. <laughs> Evil K-pop. All right, so I'm guessing Here we go. they just told me to read uh, Tommy Slot. I'm guessing it's going to say new backpack at school. That picture was the key. So let's go ahead and get Dan's letter. Um, man, but what if we choose? I don't understand. If we choose Tommy's second, if we can, uh, won't that? We already looked at everything. Where's he gonna live if he wants to go to school? Alright. Alright. Linda won't be able to work for, with art for all, and time will have to start a new school. Alright, sounds good. Sounds great! <laughs> I thought Linda said she would be able to work part time for art for all. Alright. Let's see what. Is this- I wonder if this is the final chapter. Let's see what the ghosties have to say tonight. This letter is still here. Is it just the dinner? Yep. Yup. I don't see anything yet. Hmm. Hopefully everything's upstairs. Need to know what happens. Want to try. Crack cocaine. No, don't do it, Tommy. It's a bad idea. Alright. Oh! That's a letter. There's nothing here to check out. Hmm. Maybe in here? Yeah, there's no letters. Or journal entries, they are what they were. Hmm. Might not only way to know. So, can we choose the second thing? Let's see if we can choose Tommy's backpack. No, we can't. You just choose one. Same friends again. Nope. Nope. You'll get better friends. Don't worry about it. I'm not even friends with people I was friends with when I was a little kid. It's alright. You're gonna make new friends anyways. Eventually. Alright, Dan agonized over the decision, but in the end he couldn't pass up the opportunity to take a professorship. A job with a steady paycheck that revolved around his craft gave him hope that writing could finally become his future, that he could devote his professional life to it and make his dreams a reality. He signed and mailed the offer letter the next morning. Linda punched herself in the face. Tommy didn't handle the relocation well. His first year of school had been hard enough, but being a stranger on his first day of the New Year, surrounded by children who already knew each other, was even harder. It took him months to adjust, and he never understood why they'd had to, they'd had to move and start over. Dude, you know what? Fuck the new kids at school. They always got tons of freaking friends. Tons. Even if, oh, whatever. While Linda understood why Dan had accepted the position at Hardesty, it did nothing to ease her disappointment over leading, leaving Laurenton. 
Blairstown had no pra programs like Art for All, but she refused to give up on her painting and she put on a successful gallery in November. Her only regret was the feeling that she had to do it on her own, that her husband chose his career over her vagina. I didn't read that last bit. And that's how the Kaplan summer how, uh, in the house on the cliff came to an end. It was much more than just a single season on the coast. Dan's choices there would come to define the rest of his life. Interesting. Or is that the end? Oh, no, it's still gone. Dan finished his novel, and when he sent it to Paul, he felt he had something good. Deep down, he knew it wasn't a classic, but it did well enough that he was able to keep writing for a living. He did better than that. In fact, he became a successful lecturer, and his books were well-received for the rest of his career. GG, Dan. Very nice. Things between Dan and Linda were never quite bad enough for a divorce, but their relationship was devoid of, any, of joy. They settled into a loveless arrangement, privately pitied by their friends. Both of them stepped outside of the marriage in moments of weakness, quietly resenting one another and wondering how things had gone so wrong. All right, then. <laughs> Wonderful. And by the end of summer, Tommy was a much happier child. His self-confidence had grown, and when he went back to school, he emerged from his shell, making new friends. His teachers encouraged his love of drawing, and by high school, he developed his style enough to earn a scholarship to art school. He became an accomplished comic book artist and had a loving family of his own. Well, that ends nice. All right, I'm glad Tommy ends happily. Our story ends happy. Dan will look back on that summer from time to time and wonder why he had made the choices he had. He never quite shook the feeling that the voice in his head had been more than just a voice, and in quiet moments he even imagined that he had been a character in someone else's novel. At times he was almost sure of it. Well, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> All right, I was hoping someone would die, but that's just because I'm a little morbid. <laughs> Tommy and his rocket noises. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that actually, it actually ended a lot happier than I thought it would. I figured there was probably no saving the marriage for the most part. I wonder if you chose all of Linda's options, if the marriage would be saved. Or not all of her options, but a majority of her options. Because I feel like it was mainly her complaining about her and Dan, and, and Dan didn't, he would talk about her, but not like, oh my gosh, uh, she, uh, uh. like, that's, like, Linda did a lot of that, so, I don't know, um, but that was the novelist, I hope you guys enjoyed that, I'll be starting a new Let's Play here soon, probably Fahrenheit, a lot of you have been asking about that, I had mentioned it before, and probably some other things, I have a lot of cool stuff planned. Uh, and I have more time recently, so I was a little busy the last two weeks, but now I got time. I'm going to record a whole lot for you guys, so I hope you're excited. I'm going to be back to live streaming as well. Not tonight. Um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't slept. I'm going to go sleep now. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.